it's beautiful how he's always chasing after us and leaving the 99 just for us. It's been a beautiful past week where we started the series on understanding love. That has been a very deep message. And I'm 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 happy to share with you that we continue in that tangent. We continue on that tangent. Today the Lord will have us learn about walking in love. Last week we understood what love is how that it is not all the things we think it is, but that it is actually desiring the highest goal of the, of another. And so today, the Lord has designated a special sister to share with us what he's been teaching her on walking in love. I feel this is a very pleasant time to be learning about the subject. And so if you agree with me, please have your notebooks, Open the Bibles by yourself as the scriptures come. And um, as you open it, may it come alive to you. I pray that what we will hear today will be ingrained in our hearts, renew our minds, and help us to be transformed enough to, you know, begin to look like Jesus. So without much ado, I would love to call on our sister from Poma to take the floor. Thank you so much, sis. Welcome. Thank you, Sister Joel. Thank you so much. Sister Maureen, God bless you for the song ministration. Sister Joel, God bless you for always facilitating so well to the glory of God. We thank all of you and all the sisters behind the scenes who make my school happen. Because you allow God to use you, God bless you too. Sisters, good evening. And um, <laughs> we thank God for the opportunity to share what, what um, we are being taught. And some of these lessons are not easy lessons, but his grace enables us. And so um, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this evening. And we thank you for the opportunity to come and learn from you. We thank you that you bring us together on this unique journey of, of, of understanding love. And because that is who you are. And, and so it is a journey of understanding who you are and what you require us to be like. That is to be like you one day at a time, transforming us a bit at a time in the likeness of your son, Jesus Christ. So, Father, we submit ourselves to your divine authority for this transformation to start, to continue, to deepen wherever we are on our journey with you, for this transformation to, 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 to find its purpose in our hearts so that it will be made manifest in our lives that you alone will be glorified. We soak this virtual space in the blood of Jesus. Have your way, sweet Holy Spirit. Take your place, teach us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Sister Sami, uh, Holy Spirit, thank you for utterance. Thank you. Sisters, you know, um, we all know, and I know that you know, that the whole Bible is talking about creation, if I have to divide it into two parts, creation and humanity's fall, right? In the beginning. And then Christ and humanity's redemption. So the whole Bible, if we put it together and we want to simplify issues, is about God's beautiful story of humanity's redemption. And that is the mindset that I'm trusting that the Lord will help me and help you out there also to have, even as we shared on this um, series that started last week on understanding love. And today we are talking about walking in love. But we want to lay a few foundations and then we can share what the Lord is teaching us. Sisters, um, 
the Lord is the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega. We know that. The Word of God tells us that. So if he's the beginning and he's the end, then he knows what is what happened hmm. then. He knows what is happening now. He knows what will happen. The book of Revelation, I think in chapter 1, talks about it. Jesus is, he was, and is to come. So he knows what happened yesterday. He knows what is happening now. He knows what will happen tomorrow. Jeremiah tells you and I that <laughs> before we were formed, God knew us. He holds everything together, right? So, of course, he makes the rules. <laughs> so, if he, before he formed us, he knew us, he knows the beginning from the end, he knows the things that happened yesterday that we don't even remember, he knows what happened before we came, he knows how tomorrow will end, and he holds everything together. Yeah, then he makes the rules. Isn't that good enough reason for us to go according to what he's saying, my dear sisters? How then do we find ourselves wallowing in areas which are very different from what the author and finisher of our faith and our lives really has outlined for us. This is the premise on which I'd love for us to, 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 to begin to, to think from and, and to listen from. Of course, we are listening with the help of the Holy Spirit. We talk about how scripture, Second Timothy talks about how scripture, all scripture is God breathed, right? Second Timothy 3, 16, 17. Uh, let me read it so I don't paraphrase because that part is key to what we are sharing. Um, yeah. We talk about how scripture is, is, is um, God breathed and it, it, is, it is, what does it do for us? What's, what's the, well, the whole aim? It's breathed by God himself and it's supposed to correct us and teach us and all of that. So if we start reading from verse 10, if you are reading from the ESV, it, it talks about how all scripture is breathed out by God. And then if we go all the way to 16, 17, it says all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. And we are seeing this, um, stemming from the fact that God is who he is, he knows us before he brought us here, and so he makes the rules. And we are better off going by what he, he says, because he's the one who knows, right? And then when we, um, there's another scripture that has just come to my mind. That scripture talks about how, it's in Ephesians, it's in Ephesians 2, I believe, it talks about how we were created for every good work. We were created for every good work. And so if the Lord is leading you and I through the scripture, which is God breathed and all of that for our correction and instruction, he's doing us to he's doing that to prepare us for every good work, the very reason for which he brought you and I here. So that when we are gathered here at marriage school and we are talking about our marriage and we are talking about love and we are talking about understanding love, and today we are talking about walking in love then we want to begin to look at it or consider it from the way the one who brought you and I here for a purpose has asked us to do it. As for the options, my dear sisters, there are many. There are many, there are many, there are many. But that is not what you and I have chosen. Otherwise, we won't be on this platform. So now that we've laid the premise, um, let us get into our conversation for the day. So um, I try to put down my thoughts because there were just so many things going on in my mind um, simply because it's a journey that I'm also working. And um, sisters, sorry, give me a Sorry, sisters. Sorry about that. Yeah. So I try to put out a few, a few points because it, this is a journey that I'm, I'm learning on as well. And so sometimes this becomes, um, if I don't organize those thoughts, well, sharing becomes different. 
sisters, what, what is love? Last week, we, we talked about love. Uh, and I, I put it in my own words with the same meaning. Sister Joel mentioned it at the beginning. It is seeking the maximum good of another. And in this case, we are talking about marriage. So as a married woman, or as a woman who is looking to be married or remarried, it's, it, it's about marriage. The kind of love that the Lord gives to us to give, or the kind of love that the Lord works in us to give to our spouse is to seek. And we are open here, right? So I can comfortably say to our husbands is to seek his maximum good. So anything that you and I are giving to, to our husbands that is not seeking their maximum good is not the kind of love that the Lord wants us to love. And we are getting this definition from you know, when you read the whole of 1 Corinthians and all the other scriptural references, 1 Corinthians 13, sorry, and all the other scriptural references on love, it does not do wrong, it does not envy. All of it points to seeking the maximum good of another. When we talk about walking, we all know what it means to walk. <laughs> we all know what it means to walk. To walk is to take, to advance in steps, right? Yeah, I find a couple of dictionary meanings, to advance in steps. Or we can look at it as to pursue a course of action or a way of life. So walking in love, then we can talk about it or look at it as advancing in steps to seek the maximum good of my husband. Advancing in steps to seek the maximum good of my husband or a course of action or a way of life. That seeks the maximum good of my husband. At this point, I'd like us to reflect for two seconds, including myself, for us to think, hey, this last thing that we did, or that I did, or that you did with your husband, was it, were these steps, advancing steps to seek his maximum good? Or was that a choice that sought his maximum good? Let me drop that there and then we continue. Sisters, if we look at our faith, right, as Christians, I've, I've already talked about how, what God is doing. He's really, and what he's doing, telling us in the Bible, I'll, I'll summarize it again, as he's redeeming humanity. He's, he's, his humanity's redemption. So everything in the word of God is to bring us out of darkness into light from the beginning to the end. Even revelation is taking us into the ultimate light, right? So this, Walking in love that the Lord is teaching us is to bring you and I out of darkness, uh, darkness into light. God is redeeming humanity. We fail. That story we know. He's bringing us out of darkness into light. So let's have that too at the back of our minds. As we begin to advance in steps to seek the maximum good of our husbands. Walking in love. In all of this, the Lord tells us that, look, my children, to be able to be redeemed, there's a process. And the process has this particular end. And I need you to focus on the end. Because if you focus on the process, you might give up. He tells us that many times in the word of God, through all the stories that we read. And on Sunday, um, a preacher kind of summarized it with these three words, and I'm going to borrow his words. You and I, as believers, have a mandate to spread the word of God, the good news, the gospel, to go and tell. What motivates us to do this is love, seeking the maximum good of another. Otherwise, why at all are you going to tell somebody of something that you know you don't really do listen or not? It is only because we are seeking their maximum good. And what is the message? The message you and I are to send is that the burden of the Lord is easy and his yoke is light. So as we seek the maximum good of our husbands, as we advance in steps to seek the, their maximum good, as we choose or pursue a way of life that seeks their maximum good, what is our mandate? We've talked about the office of the wife. We've talked about the ministry of the wife in the previous series. What is our mandate? What is our motivation? And what is our message? What the Lord is teaching me and has 
enabled me to sh share this evening is that anytime we're communicating with anybody, really, or we are doing anything anywhere, we must think of our mandate, what we are motivated by, and what our message is. And the same thing applies to working in love. So that dispels, that's when it own dispels this butterflies thing in our stomach, which we have considered as love for many years. And one day we're talking about it as a group of sisters, of sister friends, and one of them said, Charlie, this butterfly thing, we've been deceived because butterflies now, how long is their, their lifespan? That when you feel butterflies in your stomach, you feel you are in love. I mean, it will die soon, right? Then you have to swallow another caterpillar and get another butterfly. So that is not what it is. What love does is spelled, at, spelled out clearly for us in 1 Corinthians 13. It does not envy. It does not keep account of wrong. I mean, sisters, we know that scripture well. But how does that look like? The example that came to mind as I was thinking about tonight is closer work women. Sisters, have you seen and have you observed how we are able to love each other though we don't know each other that well? Have you observed how we speak with each other? Have you observed how we relate to each other at retreats? And if we are able to do that, how then are you and I not able to extend that same love to our husbands? Is it because they're too close to us? You know, as I was thinking of closer work wives and how we're able to extend love to each other and yet at home is a struggle. It reminded me of the scripture that talks about the fact that we are able to love, a, um, can we love a God we do not see if we cannot love our neighbors, right? Sisters, when you first joined Closer Work Women, and I'm still on the Closer Work Women um, topic in how we love, even if you are not a part of us, you see the way, if you haven't joined us before, I mean, you see the way we extend love to each other. And you come along, like you come along. You come along because it's what we are doing. And you see the result of that. And you think it's beautiful. You come and we are all hugging. If you are not, a, these women are hugging, hugging. And you get a warm hug. And it's amazing. And you like it. So then maybe next time, even if you're not a hugging person, you will give that kind of hug to somebody. And we all enjoy each other's love that way. And truly, truly, when you hug somebody, there's no guarantee that they're going to hug you in return at that same time, maybe at another retreat, but you hug them anyway. That is the kind of love the Lord is asking you and I to extend to our husbands, to seek their maximum good. To seek their maximum good. Ephesians 5.25 the Lord, the Holy Spirit talks to Paul to tell us how you and I are supposed to handle our husbands. <laughs> and is it verse here? It's at the end, not 25. I think it's at the end somewhere. Let me, I know it's Ephesians 5, but I think I missed the verse. Anyway, the, I'm looking for it, but I'm sharing what it says. It talks about how we must revere our husbands and how yes Ephesians 5 right yes how we we must respect him we must prefer him we must desire him and all of that and the Lord is asking us tonight is that what we are doing and if we are not how then do we come into that place this is I gave the CWW example for us to recognize that it is possible hmm. Now, I just remember what that sounds like. <laughs> that we are able to do it. We have the capability in us to love the way he wants us to. We have seen it happen in close our women, even on Zoom, we don't know each other, how we, we, we handle each other. We have seen that kind of love display. And so we know how to do it. And so you and I don't have an excuse. It's like the one who has heard the gospel before. You don't have an excuse. You and I know how to do it. I don't have an excuse, neither do you. So tonight, let's purpose in our hearts to ask the Lord to help us 
to see the maximum good of our husbands. How do we, how do we then, you know, how do we get there? How, how do we get there? Mm -hmm. How do we get there? So it says we are carriers of the love of God, unless you don't believe you're a child of God. So as long as you're a child of God, we are carriers of his love. And that is why he would demand you and I to walk in love, to seek the maximum good of our husband, because he, no, he is the one who put it in us. So he knows we have it. There's no matter that we are going to say, hey, mommy, I don't know how to act. And he, it's there. It's there. When the need arises, we pull it out. When it's our children, we whip it up. So we have it. We know how to. He has put it in us because we are children of God. So we are carriers of his love. That's the first thing that we have to. We have to admit and recognize that we have. We are the carriers of his love. There's a scripture that I want to share with us. Give me a second to quickly pull it out. Mm -hmm. Lord, help us open up our hearts to hear you. In Jesus' name. Okay. You know, this scripture that we quote quite often when we are praying in the spirit, or so we are praying in tongues, is in Jude, Jude 1. I mean, Jude is just chapter one chapter. So 19, it says, it is these who cause divisions. No. So, but you, beloved, 20, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. But then it continues, keeping yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. That leads to eternal life. So that we can have mercy on those who doubt, save others by snatching them out of fire, etc., etc. Here, the Lord is teaching us how we can activate the love he has deposited in us. As I mentioned, we are carriers of his love. But how do we unleash this latent weapon in us? Because when it's unleashed, we can do anything. One of the ways he's suggesting is to stay in prayer. Of course, we know you have to read the word of God. We have to stay in prayer. We have to, to, to spend time in the secret place. We have to ask the Lord to teach us how to unleash or how to unearth or how to activate this deposit of love that he has in us. And we do that here. We do that on CWW. So this then just means that you and I are just not choosing to love. We are not choosing to seek the maximum good of our husbands. We are not take, making steps or advancing in steps to seek their maximum good. So that we are coming out of darkness into his marvelous light. Remember, everything he tells us is for us to step out of darkness into his light. So taking steps or advancing in steps or choosing or pursuing in life, that's seek the maximum good of your husband. It's bringing you and I out of darkness into light. I wasn't amused when the Lord showed that to me. I felt very unwise. You know, I didn't want to use the other word. Because I'm thinking, ah, Holy Spirit, this thing you're telling me, it's almost like I'm, then I'm happy to stay in darkness. I don't want to come into the light. But that's just a hard truth that I personally had to learn. Because if I'm not allowing the Holy Spirit to help me to to, to, to activate this latent power of love in me, to seek the maximum good of my husband, then I'm saying, uh, he's saying come to the light, I'm saying no, I'll stay in the darkness. Or I want the light for this part, but for this part, I want to stay in the dark. And I'm there. And I'm like, like, a, like a little child whose lollipop has been taken and I'm sulking, I'm saying no, I'll stay here. And he's saying it's not good for you. Let's go. I said no. That is what we are doing when we refuse to allow him to work in us to choose love. Sisters, I know that it's not as easy as it sounds. I, I know. I know because after I shared, I'm walking that journey. But the Lord helps us. Matthew 6, 6 talks about how when we, let me read it so that I'll paraphrase. And I'm, and I'm reading this to talk about how we are helped, right? I've already said Jude 
as one of the ways we are helped. And Matthew 6, 6, as one, I'm going to share that as well, as one of the ways that we are helped. And when you pray, you must not be like hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. That's verse 5. And 6 says that when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. So the kind of prayer that you and I, amen, the kind of prayer that you and I need to be able to, to, to activate this love deposited in us is the kind of prayer that takes us into the presence of God, to shut the door, to shut out all the noise, to, to close out all distractions. It's just go and say, Lord, I know that you want me to love. I know that you want me to take steps to seek the maximum good of my husband, but I'm struggling. So, Father, help me. So, Father, help me. So, Father, help me. And he does. And he will. Sisters, I will share how he has helped me to do this, or he is helping me. But before I get to that, if you and I apply God's with, I took this quote from, I think, John Piper. John Piper is a renowned preacher. He said, if I apply God's, it's one of his sermons on love. If I apply God's word by faith, then, oh, yeah, if I apply God's word by faith, the, the, the love God created me to give will be revealed. I will be who God created me to be. I will see and love the world and people around me, in this case, your husband. His way, his way, I think God's way. If I apply the word by faith, now I'm paraphrasing, I will be able to reveal the love God has put in me, like I'll see in the deposit. And I will be able to love and see the world around me his way. I'll be able to magnify God and mature in my living, in my commitment to him. I'll be able to show compassion to all people. So what the Lord was teaching me, sisters, is that if I'm not walking in love, that means, one, I'm not applying his word by faith. Two, I'm not spending time with the city. I'm not praying. Because it is applying his word and by spending time with him in prayer that he helps me. And so as he began to help me to do that a bit more than I was doing, and there's still a long way to go. It's not like I've arrived yet or anybody has. We are all walking. So, as I began to walk, do a bit more, he helped me do a bit more than I was doing. He, he, I realized that in that submission and saying, Lord, this thing is hard, Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm not getting it. I know. It's not that I don't know. I know. But I'm not able to do it. So help me. And then he taught me something that I would share because I believe it's for all as facets of our lives. But in this case, we are applying it to marriage. But when I wake up in the morning, as, I, as, as I'm talking to him in my thanksgiving and worship and all of that, to be able to take or to advance steps to see the maximum good of my neighbor, I must have the love of God in me. And when I wake up in the morning, how does that even start? Because Charlie, maybe things have happened the day before and you know your mind is somewhere. The Lord is teaching me that what I can do is to come to him in the Matthew 6, 6. We shut out the noise, the secret place, and say, Lord, today, how can I be of service to you in the life of my husband? And I thought, oh, okay. That's that's um that's another one. Because how can I be of service to you as I step out of my day? Dear? I'm sure a lot of us have said that before. But how can I be of service to you where my husband is concerned? Remembering that. We have a mandate to spread the good news. Remembering that we are motivated by the love of God. Remembering that we have a message for everybody we interact with, including our husbands. And it's not about saying the Lord sees. It's about what we do and how we do it. So as the Lord taught me to say and to ask him, Father, how can I be of service to you today? When my husband is concerned, he began to teach me and to help me. In areas that I would get irritated, he began to help me feel compassion. 
that was new to me, my dear sisters. I'm embarrassed to say, but it's the truth. It was new to me because those were areas that I had struggled with. Ah, and me, I'll get angry. And yeah, maybe because of what we are learning here, I won't say anything. But the thing is happening inside. So I thought, wow, there really is a higher calling. Where the Lord is asking me to lay aside my will in this format. That it doesn't matter what my husband may have said or done. But he wants me to come to him and say, well, yes, I may be upset. I may be annoyed. And this is my journey. I may be whatever it is. But I'm willing to lay all that aside and be of service to you today in his life. And sisters, as this journey continued and as it's still ongoing, I see how the hearts that I thought the Lord had worked on still had major challenges. And a lot of work still needs to be done in this heart of mine. And I'm grateful that the Lord has shown me mercy. And he's showing all of us mercy. Because when he teaches one, it is for all. So one of the tools that I am learning, that I'm leaving with you, how can I be of service to you where my husband is concerned? The other one is, Father, I'm having a long day. But I'm available as a vessel to you. What kind of love does this, does this man live today? How do you want to love him through me today? Because on my own, I can't do it. On my own, I'm busy. I'm watching the children. I'm doing ABC. But I know you deposited something in, in me. And you have use of it for him today. So, Father, I'm an available vessel. Take that deposit, work it in me, and give it to him. I'm happy to do that for you, Daddy. And sisters, because of the transformative power of God, because of the transformative, the transformative power of the word of God and the instructions of the Lord, if we allow ourselves to be used as these kinds of vessels for him, he transforms us and we won't even know when the transformation happened. So that a thing which used to be a big issue for you will now turn into something that you can't even, you know, remember. Me, I know that I can't do it on my own. And I'm admitting here that the Lord helped me. And it is my prayer that you too, you would come to the point where you would recognize and you can't do this alone. You can't because it is, it is just not what comes to us naturally unless the Holy Spirit who dwells in us is working this in us. But for that to happen, we have to submit our wills to him like moment by moment. One of the days I was asking Pastor Nobel, so this will cry, why did God give it to us? And he said, oh, friends, he made us in his image. I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot that part. Because he made you and I in his image, sisters, there's the need for us to decrease so that he will increase, as John says, John the Baptist says. There's the need for us to lay down our will moment by moment because, sisters, if you lay it down now and tomorrow you don't lay it again, ah, you will pick it up and you forget. So for me, these tools that the Lord is helping me to use is a day-by-day -day thing. And even during the day, moments by moments, because sometimes I'll get caught up in something and unless in Charlie, I'll forget that I've asked the Lord that I want to be a vessel to him. I want to be of service to him in the life of my husband. I'm like, yeah, daddy, I'm back. How do you want me to be of service to you today in his life? On my way home, when I'm bogged down with things that I know will let me get home and I won't want to be nice, I say, Lord, I'm tired. I really don't know how to be nice right now. But I know that if I'm available to you, you can do wonders with me. So I avail myself to you. Do wonders with me in the life of this man with whom I have a covenant before you. And he does it, my sister. He does it. He does it and he shows in how I would speak with him, which is not what maybe I would, would have come out with me if I hadn't committed myself to the Lord. He shows in how I would think about him, which is not what I would have thought at all if I hadn't submitted my thinking to the Holy Spirit. He shows how I relate to him, which is not what I would have done. It's not my default. It shows, it, 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 it shows in how, and, and this is, also, like I said, it's a journey for me. I remember one of the times the Lord said, you know what, friends, you are, you are doing this. You are, you are availing yourself to me to work 
what I want for him through you. But you're not availing yourself fully. I'm like, hey, Holy Spirit, I can't be Bibio. You know, like, hey. And he said, yes. There's more to be done in your heart. And he said to me, yes, you are allowing me to love him through you as a vessel. And now it's becoming part of you. But don't you think that I care about his salvation? Yes, my husband is a Christian and he's saved. But I know that like a lot of us, we yearn for them to do more, right? It's because they are the heads of the house. And these things I'm yearning in my heart. But now when I have come to God and said, Lord, how can I be used to in this direction? So it affects all that. Sisters, even uh, Sometimes I mean, I've heard and had conversations with my many, many sisters, even out of CWW, who say, oh, yeah, I want to pray with him, but he won't initiate it every day. I have to go and pray with him. Sisters, if that is what the Lord will use you to do, to bring the presence of the Lord to your house, why not? On your own, it's hard because you feel that every day you are the one bringing it up. And every day. Yes, I know. So you, you don't, it's not about you. Submit yourself to your, your God. I know that as for God here, those of us gathered here, we love him. Otherwise, we won't be here. So let's submit ourselves to God to work in us whatever he wants to work in our husbands. And with time, because of it, the transformative power of his word, which works in us, he will be transformed, sisters. We will be, it is in kakra, kakra, small, small. It's not that I'm perfect too. I'm sure that if you met my husband on the street and you asked him, he would say I'm perfect. But I know he will say that I'm getting better. With the help of God. So let us come to that point, my dear sisters. And sometimes so we think, oh, eh, but this is happening and, and that is happening. And how about this? And how about what you do? Sisters, we forget that the Lord has, the word of God is a double-edged sword, right? The Lord who is just is merciful too. So if we are asking for justice in something that our husband has done, remember that the Lord is merciful. If we are asking for, for him to maybe like judge or, 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 or bring judgment or, or punish or correct something that we think our husband has done, let's remember that he showed us mercy too. So don't we think that the mercy he showed us, he's showing it to them too. Don't we recognize that this same holy God who doesn't like sin, he's the same one who sacrificed for you and I on the cross. So if we are we are applauding God and, and nudging him. And see what he has done. See what he has done. Remember that he sacrificed for you and I. He, it's a double-edged sword. Remember that it is the same God who has mercy on us. Who have mercy on anybody else too. We must remember that the same God who has authority is the same God who became a servant in Christ. We must see, we know that the same God who is infinite became finite in Christ. So we must remember that. So that when we are saying, hey Lord, hey, but I'm doing all of this. How about my husband? And you are telling me to take steps, to take steps to for his maximum good. How about me? How, oh, my dear sister, don't worry. As you allow the Lord, the word of the Lord Christ to transform you by submitting all that you are to him as a vessel for him to use to achieve his aim in you and also in your husband, you will notice that his promise is true because he says that, seek ye first my kingdom and I'll add everything to you. I'm paraphrasing. So as you avail yourself for his use in the life of your husband, to seek his maximum good, to take steps to seek his maximum good all the time, he will add all other things to you. And because he said it, I stand on it and I say it too. That it is true. It is so true. So sisters, this is one of the things that we, we don't, um, I personally, for me, as, as the Lord taught me, it wasn't overemphasized. You know, this is one of the things that like, Hamilton would say, if we talk about it plenty, it's become a long story. And so as I've shared, I'd like to stop here. And if there's anything that you'd like to share or add on, please feel free to do so. 
for our sisters who just joined, we've been talking about walking in love. We've talked about what love is to see the maximum good of another. In this case, your husband, my husband. We've talked about the fact that walking is advancing in steps or pursuing a course of action or a way of life. And so we redefined walking in love as advancing in steps to see the maximum good of my husband or pursuing a course of life, a course of action, sorry, or a way of life that seeks the maximum good of my husband. And that is what I want us to think about. And for me, my truth has been, I didn't have the capability to take steps or to advance in steps to seek the maximum good of my husband. It was the Holy Spirit who helped me. He's still helping me because I shared earlier that it's a journey. He's helping me. And I, 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 I'm glad that, that he's enabled us to share this today because I know that sometimes this journey gets some way. But he's there for us, sisters. And I testify that this is method works. We also shared earlier that the reason why we say it works is that he created you and I. He brought us here. He's given us a way to do things. If we say we didn't do it, then what are we saying? Everything he says in the word of God is meant to bring us out of darkness into light. So sisters, do you and I want to stay in the darkness of, mm, I wish I had him, I mm, why is he like that? Mm, and you need, you need, you need, mm, this man is some way. Charlie, sisters, that is darkness from what I'm learning. Or we want to walk in the light of allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us to seek his maximum good. That is food for thought that the Holy Spirit is asking me and asking you today. Choose ye life that you may live. In Jesus' name have I shared. I soak this testimony and this learning in the blood of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. I thank you that me too, you find me worthy to teach me this and to have me share with my sisters. May your name be praised. Indeed, according to your word, I overcome by the word of my testimony in the blood of the Lamb. I thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed for me on the cross. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Joel, I'm done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you so much, Sister Frankoma. It's an interesting journey. And I like the practicality of it. It's a daily walk. It's a daily relying on the Holy Spirit to help us. And uh, again, you see the course of action has been spelled out. So we go to him. He directs us or we ask him to help us. And then when he does, we actually do. And somebody would say, does it get easier? Or like you were just saying, so why is it always about the person? But you ended it beautifully by saying, when you seek first the will of God, everything else will be added unto you. So sometimes you might feel like, ha, ah, this is hard. This is, you know, your flesh is breaking are feeling all that but when it becomes your default you realize that you're working or whatever you're doing is flowing out of a place of love so it's no more difficult god bless you so much dear sisters it's time for sharing questioning asking for clarity and those who've already walked the journey as Sister Pimpoma has just shared we would also like you to share with us some key things the Lord has taught you so that it will be blessed, it will be a blessing to us. For those who just joined, as you just summarized, we are talking about walking in love. And because this is marriage school, this is walking in love with our partners, with our husbands, with our spouses. So how has the walking in love been? How was your walking in love even today? Hello, dear sisters. Please let's share so that we will be helped. Meanwhile, you can send questions to the chat window or to any of the co-hosts also on here. 
please, you can unmute. You can raise your hand. And then you can also speak. Walking in love. How has your walking, how is your love work? How is your love work? Big sisters in the house. So should I start naming names? <laughs> we have had a very powerful teaching. I know some of us have been cast to the heart. Some of us have seen the 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 pitfalls in our own journey, and we're we are trying to align. But it's also good to share the struggles. What makes your love work difficult? How? And she's, you know, showed really pragmatic steps to overcome. Key of riches, asking the Lord, dwelling in his presence, make me a vessel of, you know, a channel of love. And like she said, the love that has been shared abroad in our hearts. So it's our choice to. Yes, Sister Corridy, thank you so much. Um, good evening. Good evening. I apologize. I joined early later. Our two kids ran long. Um, but I want to share how you know this this teaching that our sister from from just shared, which by the way was from the from every the, once I joined, it was like super powerful. I want to share that you know, honestly, as she said, it's not the easiest in the world far from it actually because you know we go into marriage many of us go into marriage with butterflies and giggles or he called me and my heart's went begin and you know you know you start palpitating when he comes into a room and all of that but soon after not soon at some point in you know as life continues to do what life does, those signs and symptoms of love, they fade away. He comes into a room, your heart doesn't do anything. In fact, your heart is like, oh no, he's back. Um, you know, and it becomes love, so quote unquote, becomes a bit more difficult. It becomes a bit like work because, you know, what we called love in the beginning is no longer available. You are waiting for your heart to start doing those things, for your stomach to, for the butterflies to return to your stomach. The butterflies have gone on permanent leave, and you are there just empty and flat. And you know, it's now hard to summon up that desire to love the way you thought love. You know, we all thought love looked. That's where we thought love was meant to be. And now it's hard to summon it up. And then that's when, you know, your, your apathy begins to show, your lack of ability to summon up love for this person begins to show. And, you know, before long, you know, you are... <laughs> I don't know how to, you know, we know the things that happen when this, when this, you know, the first flush of love fades away. When, God help me to put this next to me. When, you know, okay, come on, uh, you know, it's time to serve your husband dinner. You kind of flip, flip the food on a plate and you go your way. Or, you know, you're just not feeling it anymore. It's just, it's not working. Yes, you're not feeling it. Let's just put it that way. You're not feeling it. The vibes are gone. Yeah, that's, the vibes are gone. And more and more, now he's, you are not feeling it too. He's not feeling you and your lack of vibe. So, you know, there's now a, a mutual lack of vibing going on in your home. I mean, things are not 
going the way they should go. And more and more, you know, the devil starts to feed you with the thoughts of, see the person they say you should love. Does he deserve to be loved? Does he deserve, uh, does he deserve your care? Does he deserve your consideration? Does he deserve, is this the one they said, is this the man they said I should respect? See the way he's even lying down on the bed, just like, you know, and all kinds of unhealthy, terrible thoughts running through your mind constantly. And you now find it hard to love. That's when you will now be saying, eh, hey, all the time, all the time, closer work with men, they're constantly teaching us what we should do, how we should not do, and eh, who's talking to the men? After all, we are the ones, we are cooking, we are cleaning, the children, is that, we are carrying out the burden, now we too, we have to love them too, eh? It's too much. Who's talking to them as well? Ah, and you know, my sister, you have a point. I won't even lie. I've been there. I remember, I think I shared before, one of the first teachings when Pastor Adlan was talking about um, <laughs> uh, that scripture where we are supposed to, First Peter 3, where you are supposed to win your husband over without words. I, I logged out of Zoom. But, you know, I think I'm in the wrong place, because surely they haven't met my own husband and they don't know the team I'm dealing with from me. I have to do what? Then, okay, after about 20 minutes, I log back in. Okay, maybe she'll tell us, for those of you that cannot do this, plan A, here's plan B, because surely plan A was never going to work for me. It was obvious. <laughs> it was never going to work. Um, but what I want to say is, is that... Um, God showed me, God reminded me that when I was full, I was unlovable. <laughs> Fully unlovable. There was nothing to recommend me to him. Nothing that, you know, made me deserve his love. First Peter, uh, First John 4, 19 and 20. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, is a liar. Now, you claim you love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your, you know, uh, you're my father, you're my king, you're my shepherd, you're my defender. You, you know the words, you know everything. But you see that man in your house. Ah, uh, I don't fit. Tried. Ah, since I've tried for that man, I can't love him again. So you see, that God that you're saying that you love, that you've never seen, but yet his son that's living in your house, that you say <laughs> you have tried for, you can't, I don't think you're really loving this God appropriately in the way you think you are. Because... That's his son you're talking about. And his word said it very clearly. That if you hate a brother or sister and claim to love God, then you're a liar. So I, I want to strongly encourage anybody who is still struggling, who is still finding it hard to walk in love. I you know that's the thing. With, you know, we have, we all have, these terrible romantic movie ideals of what love is supposed to look like. And that's why I think this is, that's one of the good things this series that we've started. Because we, me, let me, not, let me not even generalize, me, I read, oh, trailer loads of Mills and Boons, Harley Quinn's historical, romantical, no, romance novel that, you know, by the time I got married, my head was full of nonsense. Ah, the things that I felt that love was supposed to look like and love was supposed to do and love was supposed to feel like and love was supposed to act and how this is the way it's supposed to be. And ah, the crash was terrible, terrible, so terrible that, you know, I couldn't even read, even when I was trying to explain that, ah, 
this is these are the reasons for my disappointment. I couldn't quite put them all into words because oh, the ideas, the notions, the are supposed to carry me across the threshold of the house. Hey, my sister, in Africa, in Lagos, <laughs> where they might take light now. No. <laughs> oh, see. It can be tough. In fact, not it can be. It is often tough. But we have, um, we are not, thankfully, we are not left um, to handle this alone. We are not, we don't have to figure this out by ourselves. Jesus has promised us the help of the Holy Spirit. We have him. He's already in us. It's not like we're even waiting. For as long as you have given your life to Christ, you have the Holy Spirit walking with you, helping you, guiding you, telling you. So when, and you know, you will be tested, you will be tried. You know, <laughs> somebody will treat you in an unloving manner. And, you know, you have every right, according to the word, the world, sorry, according to the world, according to, you know, this world in which we live, you have every right to stand up for your rights, don't take it. Will you? Will you that? Um. Oh, what are those things? Will you take that from him? How dare he? Do you know who? Does he know who you are? All of those very, uh, very nice sounding self righteous, um, statements that are meant to make women feel good, I guess. You have all those rights. Truly, indeed, exist. Mm, but not really. Because we have an instruction to love. And, you know, if love if love was something... Have you noticed in all the, the Bible, there is no instruction to breathe. There's no instruction to eat. Those things come naturally. Breath, as long as you're alive, you're breathing. By the help and the grace of God. You have, your breath belongs to God. I mean, he doesn't ever command you just breathe. You just be going and breathing. But as you are walking, make sure you breathe. He doesn't need to tell you that. Because that comes naturally. It's a natural response. But he has instructed love. Because love isn't a natural response for us. No. Proverbs has, the heart of a man is wicked, desperately wicked. Who can know it? Love is not a human being's natural response. So we need to be instructed to love. We need to be commanded to love. And as difficult as it often is, we are not left to handle it on our own. That's the best part. We have the Holy Spirit to help us. We have the Holy Spirit to remind us and to give us ideas of what you should do. So you will receive an offer. You will receive what I've lately been calling an invitation to treat, where you have been given this offer to, um, <laughs> you've been offered the opportunity to be offended, to be angry, to be annoyed, to respond in the most hateful, unloving manner possible. You have, you, you always have a choice. And you always, in that choice, there's the unloving, hateful response. And you also have your, the, option to respond as Christ would have you respond, to respond with love. And I promise you, the more you lean into the Holy Spirit who will push you towards the love response, who will push you towards the, um, towards the harder love him response to push you towards the, don't listen to what he's saying. Just love him on my behalf, respond. And it gets easier. The more you listen to the Holy Spirit and he tells you and he helps you and he shows you and he teaches you, it gets easier. So where the things that used to trigger you so quickly and so easily that you know you're even now angry. And you're you know that you're you know that 
those palpitations and butterflies you were having because you were in love, now those things come because you're angry. Instead, you have, your body has now switched responses. Now it's out of anger. You can, the Holy Spirit helps us. The Holy Spirit leads us. He teaches us every single step of the way. You never ever have to do it on your own. You never ever have to walk the journey um, solo. You have a helper. You have a guide. You have a teacher. He will always show you the right way. He will teach you how to love your husband. Fresh. Some of us, he had to teach us to love him from the beginning all over again. Because, you know, that our first notion of love was gone. And he had to teach us afresh. But I promise you, when he does it, it's amazing. It's beautiful. It's unlike any experience you've ever had before. Unlike anything. And it, as you, the closer you walk with him, the more it starts to flow out of you. And what they, what they experience of you is they see Christ. It's, you know, because they know that they haven't done loving, they haven't treated you in the way they ought to, they don't deserve it, but yes, they are receiving this love. But, you know, this is where winning your husband over without words begins to enter. And that's where, because that's where the Holy Spirit is leading you to. And he will lead, and he will reach that destination, and it will be beautiful. Ah. In Jesus' name, amen. Mr. Joel. Amen. Amen. When we submit to his will, he will lead us to a beautiful destination. God bless you so much, Sister Cardi. Dear sisters, I haven't received any message. I do not believe any of our co-hosts have received any message as well. And um, I think Sister Kredi has ended the session so beautifully. So I would ask for a last time, if there be any question, addition, any impression on your heart by the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, I would please call on Sister Kredi again to pray with us so that we close the session. Yes, I do not have any question. No, no, I'm sorry. Do you have any question in your in your DM? No, please. There's none on my end. Okay. Okay. So this is a credit. Could you please close us in prayer? Yes, dear Steve. All right, sister, let us pray. Let's um Let's talk to our father. For some of us, this this conversation tonight is more of what we already know, more of what we the journey we are already walking on, the things that we've been learning, the things we've been working with the Holy Spirit on, and you know, it serves like a reminder, so to speak. But for some of us, and perhaps those of us who will be some people who will also be listening to this session later on. Um, this will be um, a difficult discussion to have with your father. It might be, you might be quite annoyed. You might be quite irritated at the very notion of it. But let me encourage you to speak to our father tonight. Or whenever you're listening to this, speak to him now. And, you know, let him know what's on your heart. Let him know um what the challenge is what you're dealing with he knows he sees but he's he's always ready and waiting for you to bring things to him so that he can help you so he can step in so why don't we speak to him now and ask for help in the areas where we are still struggling where we are yet to see you know the results that we feel like we should be seeing, where we, you know, perhaps need more patience to be applied, more perseverance that will build our character. Precious Holy Spirit, 
peace, your daughters. We are here. Come and incline your ear to us tonight and come and um, sit with us and hear what we have to say. There are sisters here who are struggling. This is difficult. This is a, it's a, it's a very difficult daily walk for them, a difficult daily journey that they are on and they need help, Daddy. Sisters, talk to him. Speak to him now. Speak, pour out your heart before him. Let him, tell him, remind him, you know. I remember I spent a lot of time reporting my husband to my father in heaven because you know, I felt like that was the best person to go to. You say he's your son, Abby. Okay, come and deal with your son because you don't know what else to do. So talk to him about his son. Talk to him about your in-laws if you if they are the challenge. Talk to him and let him help you. Let him guide you. Let him teach you the better way. Let him teach you the higher way. Let him teach you his way. Let him guide you into love. Let him teach you the truth that is love and how to walk in it and how to serve it, how to clothe yourself in love, how to put on Christ and show love to everyone that you encounter, that everyone who encounters you and the love of Christ that they interact with will have met Christ. Father, we've come knowing that we can't handle the, this, this thing you are you're asking us to do is a lot and we can't we can't cope. We can't handle this on our own. But oh, precious Holy Spirit, we have you. <laughs> you are awesome. You are amazing. You know all things. You see all things. And you said you would guide us into all truth. Come and teach us how to love the men that we have been assigned to. Come and teach us how to love their families as we are supposed to. And teach us how to love one another, our sisters, our brothers. Come and teach us. Come and walk with us. Come and show us the way, precious Holy Spirit. We cannot handle it on our own. We can't deal with it on our own. It's not something we know how to do. But you know all things. So we bring this and every, you know, adjacent situation to you this evening. And we ask for your mercy, we ask for your help, we ask for your grace. We ask for you to shine your light towards the way that we may love as you have loved, that we may love <laughs> the way you have first loved us. Help us, precious Holy Spirit, help us to do that which only you can help us do. We thank you for this teaching tonight. We thank you for your daughter, sister from Poma. We thank you for how you spoke so clearly through her and so powerfully through her. We ask, oh Lord, that you would bless her, that you would refresh her, that you would that she would be like a continually watered garden, bringing forth fruit in and out of season in the name of Jesus. That every, as she has poured out of her, of what you have deposited in her, on into our lives and has sown those um, those seeds into our lives, Almighty God, that you would continually refresh and renew her in the name of Jesus. We thank you, precious Lord, for all that you have been doing, for all that you continue to do. We bless your name and give you praise and give you glory, Father. Blessed be your holy name. For we pray tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, sis. Yeah. God bless you. And dear sisters, if you please unmute with us, let's just share the grace and fellowship. Please unmute. And now, may the grace of our Lord the Jesus Christ. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The love of God. The love of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now. Be with us now. Amen. Amen.
Surely the Lord Surely, has given us and mercies for all, all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the all house the of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you, sisters, for joining. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you.